What's going on, YouTube? This big pencil coming at you again with a nut. Down here at the creek today, just got off work. Figured I'd do, come do a little after work fishing down here at the creek. I got best bait that the good Lord ever made for red breast, catfish, brim, whatever you want in a, in a river or a creek. Well, this will catch them. Catabla worms. Juicy, juicy tabla worms. I got a couple dozen of them in there. I'm going to take you along with me and show you how we catch them. Show you how we clean them and show you how we cook them. Stand by. We're going to bring you a video. Now, the rig, the rig that I'm using today, it's a simple rig. Just fishing with a cork, just a little small cork. I like mine to be small. That way, uh, fish grabs it. He don't feel that hook as he's pulling it under. You get a big old cork. Some fish can feel the point of that hook, jug them as they're trying to pull it under if it's too big. With just an old number two Aberdeen, an old gold number two eagle claw hook is all I'm using. You get a 50 pack of them from Walmart for like two dollars. I'll show you how I tie my fishing knots. I tie this same knot for everything. There's a lot of different ways you can do this same exact knot. I mean it's just the way I do it. I take my, I run my line through the eye I take it and I mash it in my fingers just like that there. I'll take the long end of the line, wrap it around my finger and the tag end about six or seven times. I'll grab the tag end and the main line, drag it off my finger, and you just got a bunch of twists in the line is all it is. Take your tag end and put it back through the loop right before the eye of the, the, eye of the hook and, and pull it tight. Depends on what size line I'm using as to whether or not I wet it or not. This is a six pound tear. You can wet it if you want, but I don't. Not most of the time. Sometimes it'll slip on you. But that small line, it'll slip on you and it, it won't cinch down just right. I got something here. Oh yeah. Oh, nice, nice red breast. Got him. He's hand size. Give me a second and I'll dump it for you. You can get, I can get down in there little, little catfish. That's a damn giant catfish. That's all right. He'll, he'll go right in that giant bucket. <laughs> That's a 
little bit of fish day, big B. right down front of you. Might have been a keeper, but he ain't no more. All right, back to the house. We're going to take these fish in. Clean up what we got. See if we can't make a nice little meal out of them. Ain't nothing quite like fresh caught fish out of a good running, running body of water. Good creek fish. Oh yeah. That's what we ended up with. That big old red breast there. That big old red boobied brim there. That'd be a good eating fish there. Got a few, few little cats. Little catfish. A couple of decent brims. A good brim there. We're going to clean them up. Knock the scales off the scaled fish and snatch the hide off the cats. Let's get started. Knock them scales off and get your old butter knife. I like to leave the the, ska, the skin on my pan fish that I'm going to eat. Just personal preference. And these ain't big enough to fillet. I'll take that knife, slip him right there behind the gill plate, top his head, and twist him off. Rip that knife up through his guts. Take his guts out. He's done. Rinse him off and and that's it. His best eating fish come out the river, right here.
twist his head off. Out in the woods it go. Alright, we got them all skinned. Got five catfish. I got 12, 12 brims and red breasts. Them glorious red boobied brims. More they gonna be good eating too. All right, we got them all cleaned up now. Let's get to the, let's get to the fun part. Let's get to eating them. Go we'll fry them boogers up and eat them right here in just a moment. Stand by. All right, now you got your fish. Cleaned up, rinsed off, you got them the way you want them. I'm not going to cook all of these because ain't no way we're going to eat all 12 of them. So I'm going to just pick out the ones I want to eat right now and put the rest of them in the freezer for another day. I think I'm going to stick with these. These three big red breasts here. Yeah? And two of these catfish. Eh, I'll save one of these big red breasts for later. I know I'll use one of the small ones. Alright, now for my seasoning, if I ain't got my bread that's already got the seasoning in it, a little salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of a little bit of Tony Sachet's Creole seasoning on there. And you can season them up however you feel necessary. However you want. That's the good thing about food. You cook it to your preference. A little bit of salt. Where's my pepper? There's my pepper. Pepper on them bad boys. Now I'll flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. Seasoned up, ready to go into the flour. I ain't got no cornmeal. I'd rather, I'd rather have cornmeal, but I ain't got no cornmeal today. So we're going to use flour. It'll work just as good. Alright. Got my cast iron skillet with my my vegetable oil, and I ain't got no peanut oil. I'd rather have peanut oil, but that stuff's kind of high. But I prefer to cook out of my cast iron skillet because I'm a thug, and that's how thugs cook. Got to have that cast iron. I'm a damn thug. <laughs> yeah. All right. Keep down about seven. That way you don't burn your pan up. Don't want to burn your pan up. That's a good pan. Don't want to burn it all up, see. Then you want to burn your fish. You drop that fish in hot, hot grease and it'll boil over and burn your house down. You don't want that. Not, not for no fish. All right, as soon as the grease gets hot, we'll drop it in there. Alrighty. Got the fish all floured up. Floured up, ready to hit that grease. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let me turn that down just a smidge. Them nails frying up just right. Just right. Won't be long and they'll be coming out. Get a plate ready. Some paper towels on it to soak up all of that grease. We'll be ready to eat in just a few. All right, these first three pieces is about ready to come out.
Oh yeah. Nice crispy and golden brown. That one there wants to fall apart on me. Grab these couple catfish and stick them in there. And I'm gonna tell you, if you ain't never had one of them little small bullhead catfish out of them creeks, you don't know what you're missing. I'm telling you, that's the best catfish you ever put in your mouth. I guarantee it. Oh yeah, them look good. I'm going to eat me one of them tails here in a minute, as soon as it's cooled off enough. Alright, here goes the moment of truth. Well, I'll tell you, that's mighty good eating. They ain't huge. But I can grant you, them things there is good. Take the whole fish and just bite his tail right off. Mm. That's the best part of the whole fish right there. A good old fish tail. But that's all there is to it. It's real simple. Anybody can do it. Find you a creek. You wade them creeks out through there, find you a deep hole three or four foot deep. And that's where all the fish got to be. Ain't but about a six, six, six inch to a foot deep everywhere else. Fish has got to be in that hole. Can't. And all of them's competing for food. So it's easy to catch them. I was out there maybe an hour and a half. And ended up with 15, 16 fish just as fast as I could catch them. And walk my behind back to the truck. It was another successful day, and I rather enjoyed myself. I'm about to eat these food. Thank God for it. This is Big Pencil, and we will be back with another one soon.